Good morning again, uh, and good morning to you who are tuning in from home. Anne is the only one I can see. Hi, Anne. Um, thank you for, for coming today. We are going to talk about the narrative lectionary, which is uh, the lectionary we'll be starting on the second Sunday of September. Um, if we could go ahead and um, bring up the PowerPoint. All right, let's start with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your word, for what it teaches us about ourselves. More importantly, what it teaches us about you and your relationship to us. We ask that you be with us in our discussion this morning. Let there be um, learning and laughter and good conversation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey. So I've been talking a lot about the narrative lectionary um, over the last few months. We've had um, informational blurbs about it in the newsletter, in the voice. Um, and I think we also had something linked to it in, um, in trendings. Okay, so what is the narrative lectionary? Uh, it is a four year cycle of readings, one, one year for each gospel. Um, on the Sundays from September through May each year, the readings follow the sweep of the biblical story from creation through the early church. And it also provides a broader scope of the stories that are in the Bible. And I'll try and pay more attention to where I am with the microphone. Um, it includes many of the stories that aren't included in the revised common lectionary, the RCL, which is the schedule that we're currently using. And it includes stories that we really just may not have heard in quite some time. Uh, I know a lot of people have time to dedicate to Bible study and to looking at the different stories that are in the Bible. Not everybody has that opportunity. And so the only exposure they get to Bible stories is on Sunday morning. And so what this lectionary does is um, really, it, again, it just it, it expands the breadth and the, uh, the scope of, of the story that um, that we see on Sunday morning. Um, this project was initiated by professors at Luther Seminary, and they did it in partnership with congregations across North America. Uh, so the theology is sound. We're not just pulling this out of thin air or, or anything like that. Um, and the experiment began in 2010, and it's continuing to grow. More and more congregations are using it um, as an alternative to the, the RCL. And um, kind of just to summarize what I was just saying, um, the RCL has united the church in its reading of scripture and has given much needed structure. It doesn't pre present scripture, um, particularly the Old Testament, in a way that helps people become fluent in the first language of faith, which is God's word. And the narrative lectionary is an attempt to take nine months out of the year and help people develop that depth. So all of this makes sense so far. I have time for the uh, questions at the end, but as I'm talking, if something just doesn't sound right, please raise your hand and ask. Um, why are we going to use it? Um, the narrative lectionary will serve as the basis for the new confirmation curriculum and also for the Sunday school curriculum. And so by using it in worship um, means that we will all be reading the same Bible stories each week. And that's something that doesn't often, often happen with the RCL. Uh, some of the stories in the RCL just aren't kid friendly. They aren't kid appropriate. And so they'll, uh, particularly the gospel readings, which is what we tend to focus on in worship on Sundays. And so using the narrative lectionary means that, again, we'll all be reading the same stories. And so it, it, it's gonna bring our congregation together in a different way. And it will also provide new opportunities for music and worship. Uh, if you were at the congregational meeting in June, um, I spoke a little bit about this. And one of the things that Dr. Will is very excited uh, when he started looking at the readings, uh, I think it's the second or third Sunday, um, it, it's early on in, in the lectionary, he, um, we get to hear the story of Joseph and his brothers uh, from Genesis. And when Dr. Will saw that, he said, oh, Joseph in the coat of many colors or Joseph in the dream coat. And so he's already, that, that, that's the kinds of ideas that it's generating for him for music and worship. So uh, again, from September to mid-December, the, the texts that we'll read in worship 
are the early chapters of Genesis, and then it moves through the stories of Israel's early history. Um, so we'll talk about the Exodus, the Kings, the prophets, the exile, and the return from exile. That's from September to mid-December. So um, from maybe the last third of the Pentecost season through the beginning of Advent. And then from Christmas to Easter, uh, the preaching text will be the assigned gospel for that year. Uh, the year that we're going into is year one, which is the year of Matthew, which is what we would be going into anyway if we continued with the RCL. Um, so a lot of the readings will be familiar, but again, we'll get some stuff that we don't normally read on mornings as well. Um, and then from Easter to Pentecost, the readings will be chosen from Acts and Paul's letters, which is similar to the pattern that we follow now. Um, it's uh, during the Easter season, the first reading is from the book of Acts rather than from the Old Testament. And these particular readings were chosen because they lead well to the proclamation of what God is doing. Um, they tell of hope and disappointment and suffering and redemption. Um, and in all of these contexts, we find God dealing with the complexities of human life, which is important for us. And the stories from the Gospels will be different each year um, so that it avoids repetition. And it will highlight um, what is distinctive about each Gospel's tell of the story of Jesus. Each Gospel has a little bit different perspective. And so we'll be able to take a deeper dive into what those perspectives are. Um, and uh, to continue on the theme of why these readings were chosen, the church year really helped to shape the flow of, of this lectionary. Um, the Old Testament readings move through God's, um, the stories of God dealing with Israel and culminate with Advent and the prophets who speak of longing and hope for the new world. And then the readings from the Gospels fit the movement from Christmas and Epiphany um, through Transfiguration, Ash Wednesday, Holy Week, and Easter. So it moves us through the, the Jesus story in a better chronological order than what the, the current lectionary does. And then the readings from the Book of Acts and Paul's letters um, take us out from the movement of the resurrection message, and it culminates on Pentecost with readings focused on the Spirit. Am I going too fast? I feel like I'm talking really fast. Is this okay? Okay. So what about the gospel? Because really what this means is from September through December, we will not be hearing any gospel readings on Sunday mornings. And I know, that, yeah, I know that that's a concern for a lot of people. Um, so when the primary reading is not the gospel or a gospel, there will be be an accompanying gospel text that that is assigned for that reading. So if any of you have, um, we have we're not including all four readings on Sundays. Um, so the readings that are not included that accompany the, the two readings that are we have listed on the front cover. And so I think it's on the left hand side this week. Yeah. Um, so for example, uh, in September, when the Genesis reading will appear in the bulletin as, as part of the worship service, but on the cover, we'll have the accompanying gospel reading so that you can read that on your own. Um, and most of them, I've looked ahead, most of them are anywhere from three verses. They're very, very brief, and they are meant to accompany the Old Testament reading, not replace it. Because they the... the um, this lectionary really does force us to focus on, on one reading. And it does, I think, I think it does it in a positive way. Um, so during the fall, when the primary readings um, are taken, this what I just said, so I'll repeat myself. Uh, and then in uh, from Christmas through Easter, when the primary reading is from the gospel, the accompanying reading will be one of the Psalms. And we'll have that. And Dr. Will and I will be working together. It may be we can incorporate some of the Psalms into the service as part of the music. Um, we haven't gotten that far yet because Christmas is still a couple of months out. So uh, as I said, we will only read one lesson each Sunday. Um, the Old Testament readings in the fall and New Testament from Christmas through Pentecost. 
Um, Dr. Will and I have met and um, we will be incorporating some additional music in the services to help um, enhance the theme of the day. Um, I already talked about Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Uh, the very first reading we'll hear is um, the story of uh, Noah and the flood and God's promise. And when Dr. Will and I met a few weeks ago, um, he said, you know, kind of joking, but maybe not. We could do rise and shine. <laughs> I said, we could, but everybody has to stand up and do all of the motions. Um, are you rise and shine? Okay. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Yeah, okay. And there's a bunch of different verses that tells the story of Noah and the flood. Um, so we have in September, we may not. Um, be ready. Um, so I've been talking about how this goes from September through May. Uh, what does that mean for the summer? We have options. Um, during the summer months, we, um, we are encouraged to take a deeper dive into the Bible with sermon series. And those are just some of the examples that are, um, that are listed. Uh, and you'll see one of them is to switch back to the revised common lectionary for the summer months and maybe pick up some of the readings that, um, that the readings between Christmas and Easter did not. Uh, but it's, again, it's, it's a lot of things that we typically don't cover or hear really on a Sunday morning. And so we, yeah, do any of those jump out to you? We don't, yeah, we don't go, like, we don't go over the creeds, we, um, or anything like that, so, um, so yeah, this does, yeah, this, this gives us a lot of options, so that's, that's the end of my formal presentation, what are your questions? No, I want, we want the focus to be on the, the primary reading. deeper scripture. Yep. Thank you. Those are great questions. Um, as far as accessing the accompanying readings, I think everybody in here has a smartphone. Everybody who has a smartphone should have a Bible app on their smartphone. Um, yeah. And that's, that's a real easy way to, to access the readings during worship. And then we will also, um, when we, uh, with each issue of the voice, the readings coming up are in there, correct? Yeah, um, and you'll you'll be able to have access to them ahead of time. Oh, I know that access is there. The reality. Is gotcha. There. I am. Uh, Michael mentioned that the access is there, but the reality of actually doing it is to that. Other questions. No. I, as far as I know, like in our cluster, our geographic cluster of ELCA congregations, the only other one I know of that's uh, going to start using the narrative lecture is Mount Sad, um, in North Bend. And we made that independently of each other. Um, this really started when Doug and I were talking about how to redo, uh, redo the confirmation curriculum, um, kind of refresh it. And uh, he's the one who brought up the narrative lectionary. And so we just, we started talking and brainstorming and it, this, this is where we're at right now. Right, a lot of the Protestant churches and even the Catholic church are, do use the RCL. So you can go into any of those churches and hear the same reading. And it, that is one thing that brings us together. But this, the narrative lectionary will give us a deeper dive, a, a deeper look at, at scripture in a way that the RCL just can't. Um, part of the reason, uh, Michael, to circle back to what you talked about, about depth of scripture, part of the reason I cut, and it was my decision to cut the number of readings on Sunday morning, um, was because um, it's, it's easy to have a really difficult reading from the Old Testament and from the gospel. And, you know, which one do I choose? And so I, yeah, it, so the narrative lectionary, again, will give us an opportunity to go in depth um, in, into scripture. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So the way um, the biggest change will be, um, we'll go probably, um, if I'm remembering my conversation with Dr. Will correctly, 
We'll go from the children's message into some music, which will kind of function um, as an acclamation of sorts, and then the reading, and then the sermon, and then back to the, the everything on either side of that little piece of, of the service will be the same. We're not changing anything. Else. Okay. There's no reason to. Yeah. Other questions? Do you have any concerns? Yeah, yeah, we will. Um, gospel, the word gospel means good news, and there will be good news preached every Sunday. The good news of Jesus will be preached every Sunday. It will just be coming from a different uh, reading. And it'll help us see the connections between Genesis and Jesus, because it does go that far back. Other questions, comments, concerns? I know some people are excited. Some people are like, eh, whatever. Um, some people are like, wait. <laughs> um, I, I want to I reiterate, the theology behind this is sound. The, what, what I just said, um, we will hear the good news of Jesus every Sunday. There is Lutheran theology that will be preached. Um, and that, that aspect will not change. Yeah, I mean, we, we, I, I've already said what in the flood and of Abraham, Joseph, where's my microphone go? There it is. Um, we'll talk about the covenant and the Ten Commandments, David and Bathsheba, Solomon. Um, who else is coming up? Elisha, Micah, um, the text about beating swords into plowshares. Um, in December, we'll get we'll hear from the book of Esther. Um, the for Christmas, don't worry, we will hear the story from Luke's gospel. That that does not change. Um, January first, both Christmas Day and New Year's Day are on Sundays this year, um, and on January first, we will hear the genealogy of Jesus, Matthew chapter one. The, you know, so-and-so begat so-and-so and so-and-so begat so-and-so. We're going to read that. That's that's the assigned reading for that Sunday. That's where we start. Um, really exciting, huh? Uh, but again, you know, from Christmas to Easter, we hear, we'll hear the Beatitudes. We'll hear the Golden Rule. We'll hear about forgiveness. Um, a lot of the familiar stories in Matthew's Gospel We'll hear about Peter's vision in, uh, during the Easter season, Paul's mission, um, God's love poured out, the hope of resurrection, and um, a, the reminder that nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus. So that's, that's just this year. And, and each year it will be um, the same arc, but a different gospel emphasis. So... Um, as far as using this as the curriculum, um, they get to use new materials. Um, Ann Thorpe, bless her, bless her, bless her, is working with us again, um, getting us organized. Um, and she has already ordered the, the curriculum that we'll use. Uh, the name of it escapes me. But it, it also is from a graduate of Luther Seminary. So the theology is sound. We're not going to have to rewrite um, a bunch of it. Um, but it gives fresh ideas for how to incorporate, um, incorporate these stories. Um, for example, um, the overarching theme for the stories from Genesis is creation. And so one of the suggestions for the kiddos is to make a rainbow and then each week add a different color. And then they're able to take that home with them. So they'll get to do things like that. There's new music for them. Um, and uh, it, it really is exciting. Everybody's excited. Um, they're scrambling because it's new and we got to get different stuff together, but uh, they are excited. So I think that's it. Thank you, everyone.